Hello, hello. Today, you are in for such a treat. As you know, I have been bringing you content about all things entrepreneurship and how to win at the game of affiliate marketing, how to make money online, but not necessarily limited to that, but all inclusive about entrepreneurship and how to win the game of entrepreneurship. So today, I'm going to bring you one of my buddies that I have the pleasure to meet and the pleasure to experience all the people that he's helping and how he's changing the world. And it's actually information that I was not really aware of as to how much is crucial that if you have an idea, that if you have something that you're working on, that you protect it. I don't know if you've ever heard of Sarah Blakely. Sarah Blakely is a self-made billionaire. Yeah billionaire with a big B for big, for big millions. And uh, if she had not patented and she had not trademarked her Spanx brand, right? That actually launched her into becoming a self-made billionaire and the cover of Force Magazine, we would not be knowing who she was because maybe she would have gotten all mixed up with all the things about that would be wasting a lot of her time. So she did all the things right from the beginning, even though she, she only spent $5,000 to begin with. So I have brought my buddy, Peter, and he's gonna tell you his story and he's gonna tell you why he's so passionate about helping people like me and people like you so that we don't mess up our bright idea. So Peter, thank you for being here with me. I am so excited to have you. Would you mind sharing a little bit of your story first so that people can get to know you? Yeah, sure. Maria, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So um, by my very trade, I focus on patent litigation, patent prosecution, trademarks, copyrights, trade secrets. I'm also an electrical engineer. I deal with software design, all sorts of stuff like that. And I run my own challenges, which is a whole other story. But the, the main issue is that every single week, I get phone calls from individuals who are getting cease and desist letters, or quite frankly, they're just pissed off that people are stealing their material. They're stealing their content. You know, people are putting out original content either on websites, on funnels, um, on videos, and all of a sudden somebody just grabs it and uses it. And they say, well, hold it. I just spent, you know, weeks creating that content. And now somebody within a second just steals it. Like, how is that allowed? And I have to introduce them into something that's called intellectual property. And so, what I found was it would be much easier if I trained people on certain concepts, certain gave them certain knowledge in the area of patent law, trademark law, and copyright law specifically, so that they wouldn't run into the issues later. I mean, myself, I was born in the projects of Brooklyn. You know, I mean, the mere fact that I am where I am today is just, it's a miracle because I head up a big, IP department at a law firm that's in Boston and New Hampshire, but I grew up in the process of Brooklyn in uh, Williamsburg. And so, you know, I started focusing on electrical engineering, started getting really bored because I don't like doing the same thing all the time. I need new content. I need new things to do. If I don't, I'm bored. And so it's like, just get me out of the room if I have to do that over and over. And so I was working three jobs and uh, one of them was a waiter at a place called Daffodils. And one of the waiters walks up to me one day and he says, you're really pissing me off. And I said, what, what did I do, Mike? And he says, you're so miserable. You're about to graduate with an electrical, engin electrical engineering degree from one of the best schools for electrical engineering. And you're miserable. What is your problem? And so I said to him, I'm bored. I mean, I just realized that I spent four and a half years to get an electrical engineering degree and I'm gonna be bored for the rest of my life. And he said, well, why did you focus on it in the first place? I said, cause I love technology. I love new things. I love innovation. Uh, and he says, well, have you ever heard of patent law? I said, no, what's patent law? He said, well, that's where you're protecting new, invent new inventions literally every single week. My brother-in-law is one, you should look it up. So I looked it up and I said, that's what I wanna do for a living. Well, it just so happened that it was really late to apply to law schools. So I decided to apply to two law schools. The number one law school in the world for patent law at the time was called Franklin Pierce Law Center. So I said, all right, I'm going to apply to the number one law school in the world. And my grades were not that great. And then I said, I'm also going to apply 
to my own college, you know, where I was at the time, and then applied to their law school, which was nowhere close to being one of the good law schools in the world. I figured, you know, fallback plan. So I get a letter in the mail. It's from the school that I'm going to for electrical engineering, which is one of the best in the world, but not known at all for patent law. And they say, guess what? You're not getting in. You're not good enough, not accepting you. But then I get a letter from the number one law school in the world for patent law. And they say, we want to interview you because we're interested. No they go, way. What? Like now I was in, I remember because I was in the hallway. I was so excited. I literally jumped up in the stairway and I banged my head on the ceiling because it was a low ceiling. I remember I like banged the top of my head and I was like, oh my gosh, that hurt so much. And so I, I then went to uh, Boston to see a good friend of mine, stayed with her and ended up interviewing with the law school. They love me and the rest is history. And so now I'm the head of the IP department. Uh, we've been ranked the number one IP group eight years in a row by uh, managing IP. Um, I represent clients like Constant Contact, MIT, Harvard, um, you know, big ones, small ones. Uh, I love entrepreneurs, really love people that have a lot of con content that are in social media. Because those guys are like, always think like that. They think of new things and they're hitting new stuff. But those are the ones that get really pissed off when their stuff gets copied. And so I decided to create something that's very unusual. Most lawyers love it when you reach out to them because they can start billing you at their, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars an hour. And my billing rate six hundred dollars an hour. Um, but I thought, what if I could train people in the beginning? Like, what if I could get them to understand concepts like copyright law so that people can't steal the content from their funnels? Um, so they can protect their pictures or their artwork or NFTs. Do you have any idea how much money has gone into the NFT market? People are making millions in this industry. Well, the original artwork that's being turned into NFTs, that all is protectable by copyright. And so there's so many things, so many aspects to copyright and trademark law specifically and also patent law, but predominantly copyright and trademark law when you're talking about social media, um, that if people knew, then they would be able to maintain the authenticity of their work. They would be able to make more money off of their content, and they'd be able to stop people from knocking off their stuff, creating derivatives, and quite frankly, like making money off of somebody else's hard work. And so that's what I decided to do. I created a challenge. It's literally a training. It's five days. It's one hour a day. And I train people step by step, just one hour a day. I cover trademarks, copyrights, patents, trade secrets. I make sure they understand the concepts behind them, how they pertain to their specific scenarios, so that these people are so well equipped that people do not go knocking off their content because they're filing trademark applications. They're filing copyright applications for $65 only. They're doing trademark searches. They're doing trademark applications. I mean, the level of acceleration that these people are obtaining from just five hours of training, one hour a day, I didn't even know this was going to happen. Like I did, I had no clue this was going to, I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't know these people were literally going to excel like this. But now that they're understanding it, you know, they take 20, they'll, they'll take like, let's say 20 pictures, photographs, the three of them that are the most important to them, they'll file a federal registration for. Then when somebody copies it, they send a copy of the registration certificate to the other party. The party pulls it off immediately, gets it off the web, stops knocking it off immediately. When before they would send all these communications saying, will you please stop copying my stuff? Please stop copying my stuff. Nobody will listen. Now, when you get a federal registration that guarantees you at least $500 per infringement, people listen. And so these are the things that are available, but nobody knows about them. So what I do is I actually train them on the step-by-step -step so that they don't run into these problems. And they, they, get, they basically end up on a way more solid ground and they grow a lot faster than others. 
Wow, that's impressive. You know, and, and I have seen some of the testimonies and, and some of the things that people have been able to accomplish through through your challenge. And it's remarkable. It's remarkable. I saw one of the testimonies where this woman had spent, I believe, two years in hiring attorneys, not to mention the amount of thousands and thousands of dollars that she spent. Right. And she she said, do you, do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, there are two women that actually gave that kind of testimony. Yeah, I know exactly. You're talking about one of them was Krista, another, and I know who the other one is as well. So yeah. what was her, can you remind us what the story was with her? Yeah, so th they both ran into the exact same situation. One of them, uh, what happened is she, ha she hired a patent attorney, worked with them for two years in the preparation and filing of a patent, of a patent application. Her testimony is that she learned more in two days of this challenge, which was only two hours, you know, one hour a day. She said she learned more in two hours than she learned in two years from her own attorney. I mean, that's in and of itself, that, that's just sad. You know, I mean, you're right. She likely spent tens of thousands of dollars in all the work that she did with her attorney. You know, and the other one said the same thing. Same exact situation. And ironically, she also mentioned it was two years. And so it, it's, I went to an event in California last week and it was, you know, there were thousands of people there and I had five different individuals come up to me and said, you run that protector idea challenge, don't you? And I said, yeah, I do. Why? What's up? Well, seven years ago, I had my own company. I was providing this kind of product. And then I got a cease and desist letter in the mail, and they said that I was infringing upon their federally registered trademark. So I had to change the name of my company, change the name of my main product, which had the same name, pull it off the shelves, change the packaging, change the website, change the stencil, remove the business cards, everything, cost them tens of thousands of dollars to do that, and then come up with a new mold, a brand new mold, because on the product itself, they had a mold that had the trademark in it. Oh my gosh. So that needs, do you know how much it costs to do a new mold? Like fifteen uh -oh. to $20,000 just to do a mold. So if you have a sneaker and think of like the Nike swoosh. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the Nike brand sneakers on the bottom of them, I don't know if they do it still, but on the bottom of some of the brands, you actually see the swoosh or you see it on the side. If it's not in the canvas, if it's in the rubber portion, that's part of the mold. Mm -hmm. And so if that logo infringes upon somebody else's trademark, their federally registered trademark, you now have to come up with a brand new mold. That's what this company had to do. So they spent hundreds, I mean, just hundreds of, no, it was thousands. It was literally, I think he said it was like $37,000, somewhere around there mm -hmm. in repackaging, remolding, changing the business name, everything. I mean, it's horrendous because most people think, well, if I file the name of my entity with the Secretary of State, I own the name. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. That means you filed it with the Secretary of State. That's it. It doesn't mean you federally registered anything. So it's, it's a really painful thing to watch. Uh, and here's the thing. When you end up in trouble, the lawyer always wins. Whether you win your case or you lose your case, the lawyer wins because the lawyer always gets paid. So I'd much rather people understand beforehand, you know, how to make sure you don't get into trouble in the first place, which will make your life a lot better. And all the movies and all the TV shows make lawyers out to look like, you know, horrible sharks and everything. And I mean, I know a lot of lawyers. There's very few that are corrupt, quite frankly. It's just it's just like probably it was around 10 years ago when the media started saying there were shark attacks in the United States. There were really like three out of like, I don't know how many hundreds of miles of, you know, ocean front in the, all of the United States, but there were some things that were happening with lawyers and it was pretty bad. So I don't mean to make every lawyer out to look bad. That's not my intent. But if you're going to work with a lawyer, know what you're doing so you can minimize the amount of time you spend with them. And so that when you do talk to them, you're actually giving them something specific to work on as opposed to as an example, let's say your car is not working. You go to a mechanic, a car mechanic. You say, hey, tell me everything that's wrong with my car. Nobody in their right mind would ever do that. Never. Because you get a list of like 100 things 
and the bill would be more than the cost of the car. You know, so you never go to an auto mechanic and say, tell me everything wrong. You don't. You say the muffler has a problem. How much does it cost to fix the muffler? So then why would you go to your attorney and say, I don't know what's going on. Fix it all. It's like you don't do that. Right. When you buy a house, you don't look at the sticker price and go, I'll take it. Nobody does that. They negotiate. They figure things out. So what I'm trying to do is help people understand the language so that they'll so they know how to work with their attorneys. They understand what the attorneys are doing. And at the same time, they have an understanding of what you can do to protect aspects of your idea. So if you're doing, let's say you're on TikTok, let's say you're running lots and lots of videos and you got a large following, chances are you have a name associated with it. And so people are following that name, right? Now that name, sometimes it's your own name, but many times it's not. It's like, you don't want everybody to know your personal name and your personal address. So you have some kind of alias, you know, or you come up with a name of the company. It would be great if you could actually protect that. So nobody else could use that name. Otherwise, you get your filling, your, your following of like 5 million, 10 million, 20 million. And all of a sudden, somebody takes the exact same name. And what happens? All these people start following that person. Why? Because they're following the name. So your name is incredibly important. You build your own brand, you build your following, and you have a message to release to the public. Well, you want to make sure that the, the source of that, of that message, you want to make sure everybody knows who the source of that message is. So if I say, if I say to you, I'm going to buy you a brand new pair of sneakers, and you say, okay, cool, that's nice. And then I tell you, I'm going to get you Kmart brand sneakers. You're like, uh. All right, whatever. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Pete. I'd rather take the $10 and get a smoothie, right? So it's like, keep your sneakers. Um, but if I told you I was going to buy you a brand new pair of Jordans, you go, oh, all right, cool. Well, what is that? That's a trademark. Jordans, that's a trademark. Kmart, that's a trademark. So the second you heard the name Kmart with sneakers, you immediately thought cheap, not really good brand. Yeah, they've got some stuff that's all right, but my feet are going to be killing me. I better get a good pair of socks. And then the other ones, when I said Jordans, you probably thought, man, I wonder how much I can get for those on eBay. Literally, because you're like, man, if it's a good pair, some Jordans go for $16,000. You know, there are some powerful, powerful, expensive pairs of Jordans out there. So this is, this is the power of the name, your name, your brand, very powerful. So what if you could protect that? Well, that's what trademark law is about. So you could file a trademark application, then nobody could ever, once you get a federal registration, nobody could use that name. It's now yours. And so this is why I try to train people in these things. So then when you're running content, people can't knock you off. It becomes more difficult. You know, I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect. I'm just gonna say it's good, it becomes, it becomes more difficult to knock you off when people know what the real deal is. And even with your logos, people create their own logos that they use, right? Same thing, all protectable. If you have a website or a funnel, all the, all the text, protectable through copyright. If you go to www.copyright.gov, you can file a form there. You can literally select the form, fill it out, make your submission, get a federal registration. And then when somebody goes and they steal the stuff from your funnel, you go, hey, funnel you, get off of my stuff, <laughs> all right? Get off my stuff, this is mine. I have a federal registration, get out of here. And they, they just, they disappear because they don't wanna deal with the damages. So that's what I'm trying to do, make people's lives a lot easier, get them on a solid foundation. Um, I find it more gratifying than suing people and protecting people in court, so. Although I'm really good at that. I haven't lost the case yet. So there you go. You haven't lost the case. Not yet. Yeah. Hopefully I don't. Yeah. Well, we've had, we've I, had some that have settled. We've had some that have actually settled um, where, you know, it actually looked like the other side was going to win. Mm -hmm. And then the party settled. I'm like, oh, good. I didn't lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, yeah, it's like my coaching and my happiness coaching. I will not take anybody because right now I have a hundred percent track record. So anybody, oh. any client that I take is like, 
I had one that was almost a train wreck and I almost fired him because he was going to mess up my 100% track record. And then he was mm. like, please don't fire me. Please don't fire me. <laughs> so, so I have, I have a very dumb question. Yeah, sure. So just because I say on my website, copyright, you know, like uh, at GoDaddy, it says, you know, say copyright. So right. I put copyright with all the right. content that I put, all the hours, endless hours that I put on my, because I also run a nonprofit, all yeah. the hours that I put in my copyright for my website, just right. because I, I put copyright, that doesn't make it copyright? That's actually not true. Um, you actually, so here's the thing. You can put copyright, the copyright symbol, so the circle C, the date, namely the year, right? So you would say circle C, 2022, and then the name of the entity that owns the work, right? So if, like I have an entity called A to E Challenges, right? And so for my websites, my funnels, my content, it says circle C, 2022, A to E Challenges, comma LLC, period, right? That's the copyright notice. Now, you don't have to, you don't have to file with the copyright office to actually have copyright rights, which is kind of interesting. That's just the way our government works. Um, the reason why you file is multiple reasons. Number one, if you in fact have to enforce your copyright without the federal registration, you have to prove damages, which gets really hard to do. Like, all right, so they copied this portion of your text. Now, how much damage did you really incur? It, it, it ends up becoming this evidence nightmare. And you, sometimes you can spend more money than you actually make. But if you get a federal registration, you're guaranteed statutory damages. So that's one reason why people file with the Copyright Office, because it's only $65. You guarantee statutory damages if you win, right? And that's per infringement. So what I tell people is, if there's something important there that you'd get upset if somebody copied your material, put your copyright notice on the bottom. Now, if it's something that's really important, then, and you're okay with spending $65, follow it with the copyright office, because then you're gonna get a federal registration. So if somebody steals it, you can send them a copy of the federal registration and now that since they see it, it's a government document, the chances of their back, backing off is way higher, like way higher, because they don't want to deal with the government. Um, so as an example, I had a client who was a website developer. He created websites for dentists, right? And he was so upset. He reached out to me. He was out in Georgia. It was in Georgia or Florida. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. It's a warmer place than New Hampshire. Let's put it that way. So you know how I feel about that. So um, reaches out to me, says, people are knocking off my stuff. I'm so effing upset about this. You know, I'm really tired of this. Spent all this money on this. Um, and all these people do is they copy the stuff from my website. They create their own website. And now, you know, they're making money and it's not fair. So I said, okay, well, what do you want to do? He says, I want to sue these people. I said, well, all right, back off there, little guy. Uh, let, let's let's start from the beginning, all right? I said, do you have do you have any federal registration of anything? It's like, of what? I said, okay, great. We're really starting over. So I said, do you know what a copyright is? Yeah, that's that that thing you write on the bottom of the of the website. I go, yes, that that's 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 correct. That's called the display. You know, that's called your your notice that you give it to the public. That's correct. But do you know how it works? He says, no. I said, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to file a copyright application for your website, everything that's on your website, OK? And then what we're going to do is when we get the federal registration, we're going to send a copy of that to everybody who's infringing and tell them to back off. He says, well, it's worse than that. And I said, well, what's worse? He says, they're stealing a picture of my wife's teeth. So I said, all right, let me see if I understand this. You've got a picture of your wife's teeth on your website? I said, who does that? He says, well, I thought it was going to be my website. I said, yeah, but you got your wife's teeth out in the public, and you've got a problem with this? I mean, it probably shouldn't be up there in the first place. And he says, well, you know, whatever. But I want them to stop copying her teeth. I'm like, OK, whatever. So I, so I said, let's file a copyright application for the picture of your wife's teeth. So we filed copyright application for that. We filed copyright application for the website. 
Next time we see, then he does a search to figure out if anybody's using any of his content. Every time he did, we sent a cease and desist letter. And he said, well, I'm spending money on you. He says, I want $2,500 for every infringement. I said, okay, well, why don't you make a demand for that, but don't sue them? He says, okay. So every time somebody would infringe, he'd send a cease and desist letter and ask for $2,500. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. I mean, there had to be probably 40, 50 different people. And slowly, everybody stopped copying his material. See, and so that's the power of a copyright. So whether you have that notice on your page or not, you do have certain rights. You put the notice there so as to place the public on notice so that they're aware that this is content that's important to you. Now that they're placed on notice, you know, if you're going to sue them, you want to file for a federal registration before you sue anybody. Now, once you get that federal registration, then you can make them aware of the federal registration. Chances are high they're just going to back off, which makes your life a lot easier. Yeah. So that, that brings me to something that, you know, I, I have a huge aso association and a heart for network marketers and affiliate marketers, right? Oh, yeah. Well I love as, affiliates. Yeah. As well as all, all entrepreneurs. So uh, there, there's a lot of women maybe men too, that they have taken, they have taken pictures of their before and afters. And a lot of times they, and their pictures, yeah. their pictures for their particular product ends up being used by other people. Yes. That would be the benefit of someone who, who, you know, like, you know, there's people that are making 10, you know, 20, 40, 80, a hundred thousand dollars a month. And their yep. picture is now all over the internet. You got They're it. They're getting nothing. So that's exactly why would somebody right. care about that? Yeah, that's exactly right. What you said is exactly right. Because there's certain pictures that will speak to an audience. You know, it's just like somebody can relate to that picture, right? And so you see what people actually do is they run different ads. And when they run the different ads, they use different pictures. And then they look at the statistics and they see which ones were people clicking on. Then once they figure that out, those are the ones that they run for their major ads. Now, so they're spending all this money, right? And now they've got their, they know exactly which images are the best and they go and run them. Well, what happens? Somebody else sees the image and they go, oh, that's great. There's a before and after. Let me grab that. Let me go, go and put that into Paint Shop or put that into some other program, you know, Adobe, some other Adobe program and they're editing it. They get rid of the text. They put in their own text. Now they've got a picture of your wife before and after, and they're running it on their page, you know? And so when you actually file for a copyright for those images, that would be federal copyright infringement if they did that. So you send them a notice letter and say, hey, that picture there, that's protected by copyright, by copyright law. You need to back off now because every single infringement, every single infringement, you're going to pay me for every single one of them. And what happens? They pull it. They, they just, they back off. Now that doesn't mean all of them back off because there's some companies that are in Malaysia and Indonesia and they're thinking, good luck finding me because I've got a shell company. I've got like eight layers of shell companies and like my great, great, great grandfather's names on one of them and my dog's names on the other one. You're never going to find me, you know? So that does exist. But many, of I'd say a good 70% of them you'll be able to get rid of by just sending them an official letter. And separate from that, um, entities like YouTube, entities like um, even Facebook, they have enforcement procedures you can use. Even eBay, Amazon, Alibaba, they have enforcement um, proceedings that you can use where you take a copy of your, but they want your federal registration. So you take a copy of your federal registration, you submit it to them and you say, hey, these images are mine, or hey, that product is mine whatever it is, and now they will put a freeze or a hold on somebody else's account or on their product or whatever the case may be. It's different for different entities. You need to look at their bylaws and read their policies, but many of them actually have what they call intellectual property enforcement proceedings. And you can send these things out to make people stop using your pictures, stop showing your products. Do you know when you sell products, I'm sure your audience knows this. If you're selling um, a lot of products, let's say like, 
you've got a whole body of like phones, right? And so you you don't just go, oh, let me take a picture of this. Click. No, you set up the background. You've got the lighting perfect. The reflection, it, it can't be a bad reflection like that, you know, or like, like right there. You wouldn't take that picture because you see a light bulb there. Like you do all this work. You polish the glass. You know, you've got like, like, flowers i mean whatever you got it's perfect and then you use it for sales sales start picking up somebody goes oh man i get a product like that copy paste they stole your image that's copyright infringement so you know you can actually stop other people from doing that if you understood intellectual property law so that's what i'm training people in in the protect your idea challenge so that brings me to the next point i have a lot of friends uh you know, as you know, I live in the Laguna Beach area and there is incredible killer photographers, incredible great killer sushi. photographers and <laughs> great yes, sushi. Yes. <laughs> if you follow my, <laughs> that's Very a whole backstory. Exactly. <laughs> a whole backstory. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I'm thinking of some of my, some of my friends who are photographers or this fancy word that I don't know how to pronounce or cinematography. Yeah, Basically cinematography. That they it. Yes, yeah. that, that word. I need, I need mm -hmm. to learn how to say it. So mm -hmm. I have friends that, a lot of friends locally in in um, Orange County area as well as LA area. Sure. So what would be the benefit? You know, because some of them are going to say like, who cares? You know, if somebody's using my 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 products and like I can think of one, one friend of mine, uh, his name is Corey. He is Corey Sparkle with Sparkle Films. And he has remarkable products there. I mean, remarkable uh, photographs and videos and Absolutely. You know, all the cinematography that he's done, however you say it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I speak two languages, so I make an excuse with that. <laughs> it's called Spanglish. And yes. Spanglish. That's right. <laughs> yes. Spanglish. And why would be why would be the benefit of him learning? You know, because he has all these photographs that are being used by other people, yeah. and he gets a zero commission from that's any right. of the other work that he's done that's right so if he does have what you're suggesting he has how can he monetize that or is it yeah is it just so that you can say hey take my, my stuff down but could he actually monetize it versus just go after people oh yeah absolutely both both you know he could actually do both so the um through copyright law you can actually protect your photographs you can file them either individually or you can follow them as what's called a compilation, which is a collection of works. So you can put them together and follow them all together. Um, and so, matter of fact, I know a lot of, you know, really well-known artists and really well-known painters and well-known photographers that'll do this. They'll take their works that they believe are the most important and they'll file for copyrights on those. And then what happens is they make the public aware of it. And so, there are websites where you can actually sell your images. You know, you can sell your pictures um, and they're connected to through the back end to another company that will take the picture and make it any size you want, you know, put it on any kind of matting you want. Like I have this huge image of two lions up to the right side of me. And I got that through an artist who had the original work, but then she puts it on the site and you select exactly what kind of print, you know, the size, everything, right? It's the same thing with photography. You can do the same thing. Although a lot of the photographers will tell you that they have to use specific types of lenses and it has to be a certain level of quality, you know, um, DPI to make sure that the, or resolution really, is to make sure that the quality is high enough so that you can make it bigger and maintain the quality, right? But what you do is you take those images and you sell them on that site, but then you make everyone aware in your notices that this is protected by copyright. And then you can actually have a watermark on the image that's displayed so people don't see the original, right? So the watermark is actually, it has like your name on it or your company name. And it becomes really difficult to remove the watermark, although there's software packages that are getting better at it. With technology, it's becoming very hard for artists and photographers to make money because people can just modify things with software these days very easily. But through copyright law, they can get a federal registration. 
And once they have the federal registration, they can place that notice on that site saying this is protected by copyright, put the notice on it, you know, and even when they ship out a, um, a, um, a copy over to another party, on the back of it, it should have the copyright notice. Make sure it's clear that you do not, you are not obtaining the right to photograph this. You do not get a non-exclusive license to do blah, 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 blah. It depends on what you're selling them. If it's an original work, then by all means, the person who's buying it's going to want the right to copy it. You know, so, um, but for photographers, I would say copyright, really important. You know, if you've got like a hundred pictures at a certain beach, you can file it as a compilation. You know, there's things like that that I talk about in that, in the program. Yeah. And we, do you talk about the pro? Uh, do you also talk on the program as to how they can go about monetizing that as well? Well, monetizing is is it it's it depends on what industry you're in, right? So, if you're an artist or you're a photographer, there are certain websites mm -hmm. that you can actually upload your information, and um, you can name a price specific to your product, uh, to your images. And you can connect it to another entity that will create the, the whatever size matte finish that you want. And that's how you monetize it. You use those services. And so in my program, what I do is I talk about the copyright issue. But then when you apply to be into the program or when you, when you register for the program, which is only $95, which is ridiculous because you get five hours with me, which is essentially is equivalent of more than $3,000. You know, because... wait, 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 what? <laughs> now I'm talking TikTok. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's let me make sure because you said it like blah, 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 like as if everybody knows what you just said. Are uh -huh. you saying that the program that you offer, yeah, you know, this challenge that you offer for people to learn everything that you've been talking about and how to protect themselves? Like, let's let's I'm talking about my friend Corey. He's an entrepreneur, he's very well known in the Orange County. Uh, South, Orange, uh, South, South California area. Sure. And he has this magical videos and photographs of all things Laguna Beach, right? That's awesome. And people are using it left and right, but he makes no, no money. But he decides he wants to learn how to monetize that and how to protect it so that anytime that he sees that he sees his, pro his, his, yeah. his products being used or his art being used, that he can you know, tell them either you pay me, this is this right. is what what is the charges, or you know, this is this is the fee that you're gonna pay by the government. Absolutely. You can go to your program and learn all of these things that you're talking about for how much money? <laughs> Ninety five dollars. Yeah, I I know now now hour? you understand. Just to be clear, now you understand why I have lawyers who have called me up and said, "What the h are you doing?" Yeah, you, you're 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 a trader. Well, no, I'm not. A, all right. So just to be clear, I'm not getting rid of lawyers. I'm making sure that when people talk to lawyers, they know what they're talking about. And why is that important? Because if that lawyer has to explain to you the basics of what's a patent, what's a trademark, what's a copyright, that takes time. Now, lawyers do not bill. They don't they don't sell products. They sell time. So the longer it takes for you to get up to speed, the more money you are spending. So in my program, I teach you the basics of patent streamers, copyrights, trade secrets. There's a Facebook group that you go in, which is free, right? Where you can interact with other individuals, where I answer different types of questions and give other resources, like some places that you can go for uh, low royalty music to use or background music or background sounds or images, like I just give people stuff, you know, just to help them out. Then the, the main reason why I'm doing this is because I want you guys to understand this stuff. So that when you hire somebody like me, we're having an educated conversation about something that's necessary and you're not being paid, you're not paying thousands of dollars for something that should have cost hundreds. So my question is, so you have, I know that you have your pay for program. Are you saying that you also have a free Facebook program where people can come and kind of just get an idea as to everything that you offer and all the things. And they can also go and pay only $95 to learn all of this. Right. Right. Okay. So there's two different things that are going on here, right? So <laughs> I've added a lot of features to this. 
if you if you register for the challenge, it's ninety five dollars. It's five hours, one hour a day. You're automatically entered into a private Facebook group. In that private Facebook group, it's only the registrants and select individuals that I've allowed in there that I know personally that have either been through a challenge already or are helping me run the challenge. And what you do there is you say who you are, what you're looking for, what you like to learn from the challenge. I watch every one of those videos and I customize the challenge just for you so that I make sure that I'm addressing what people, <laughs> you're making the facial expressions that I'm getting from my attorney friends. They're like, you're doing this for $95? And I, I said, yeah, because somebody's got to make a difference here. Somebody's got to change the industry because what happens most of the time is people will call lawyers once they've been sued or once somebody has ripped them off and that's it. Well, how about some preventative maintenance? How about you actually know what you're doing beforehand? You get trademarks in line, you get copyrights in line, you know what your potential rights are. And then when somebody does something wrong or, um, or like somebody threatens you, you can go get out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. Like stop bothering me. I know what this means. You know, so it's better to understand that stuff. So what you get is you get into the five days. It's one hour a day. You go into the private Facebook group. I, um, I actually allow the videos from the challenge to be there for 30 days after you're in the challenge. So I give you another 30 days just to give it to you so you can take notes and take your time. Now, there's a special offer that's called a VIP offer. The VIP offer is for people that are serious about this. Like they've got a business, they're starting a business. They don't want to play games. Like, look, I'm in a situation or I, I need to learn some very specific things. So what I do is I allow them to email me personally their, their questions. And then I go through them and I will respond to many of them during the VIP session. I also show them how to file a trademark application, all the elements of a trademark application, namely the recitation of goods and services, what's an international class, how to file like every single piece that's needed to file a trademark application. The VIP costs $195 more. So it's $195. Wait, 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 what? Again, we're talking TikTok. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. That reminds me of that song on TikTok. Wait, 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 what? So wait a second. So you'll walk, you'll walk, you'll basically hold their hand as a group, right? And mm -hmm. you'll show them step by step how to do all of these things that you normally right. charge six hundred dollars an hour. Well, I mean, just just to be clear, I don't want them to go and file their own application because they're if they make a mistake, then you can't fix it. So what I'm doing is I'm showing them all the parts that are necessary for an application so that they can get it all together and then give it to their lawyer. Do you see that? So now a trademark application that probably would have cost $1,200, $1,400 can cost you $600, $700 because you've got the specimen. You've got the, you know, you've got a copy of the logo itself. You've, you know the international class. You know what the recitation of goods and services are. You know the entity type. You know the address. You know the email address. You just say, here, Mr. Attorney or Miss Attorney, this is for you. Please put this together and file it. Now they take that. They give it to their paralegal. They look through the stuff, make sure everything's in place. They put it together, give it to the attorney. The attorney looks it over. Boom, filed. As opposed to what the majority of the watchers would do when they work with a trademark attorney, which is, hello? Yeah, um, Miss such and such. I need to file a trademark. And they're like, okay, what on? Well, I've been, I've been using this name for a while. I want to own that name. And then they say, okay, well, what are the services? What do you mean? Well, like, how are you using the trademark? Like, what, what exactly are you putting it on? Well, I have a coaching program. Okay. Well, what do you do in the coaching program? In the coaching program, I coach people. I mean, and they're like, no, no, like elaborate. What do you mean? And as you're doing this, the clock is running and you have to pay for all this. And then the attorney says, well, are you selling any, are you selling any videos with that? Oh yeah, I am selling videos. Okay. That's another thing to write down. Okay. Do you sell, do you have t-shirts and caps with the name on it? 
Yeah, we do. That's another thing to write down. Imagine if you had it all written down, just give it to the attorney. And now you just, you get on the phone with them and they say, is this everything? And they're like, yep, there's, I'm doing uh, coaching. The coaching is on heart healing associated with emotional issues like uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. I also have t-shirts over here that says, you know, I'm no longer rocked, something like that or whatever. <laughs> Been there, done that, you know? So like you've got all these things and you just hand it to the attorney. So your cost decreases, you understand the lingo. You're not intimidated by lawyers, which you should never be intimidated by a lawyer. You know, they're just, I'm just like everybody else. There's no reason why somebody should. All right, maybe I'm not exactly like <laughs> you're, everybody else. You're definitely not like I'm a little unique. Else. I I am a little unique. Yes, I am a little unique. Right. So you practically, better. you're practically the Robin Hood of the legal field. Oh. Right. But thank think you. Think about it. I that's mean, that's what it. I'm trying to do. Actually, what you're saying is literally what I'm trying to do. Except I'm not trying to steal from anybody and give it to anybody who's poor. But but I'm trying to make sure all the poor get it. Because well, I don't care if you're a millionaire or if you just make 10 bucks you know, a week, you need to know this stuff. Because if you don't get it and you're pushing out major content like your friend who is doing remarkable you know, pictures you know, in cinematography or just you know, in photography, I mean, do you know how hard it is to get perfect lighting, perfect wind, perfect environment? you know, people out of the way when you're trying to take the pictures and you get that perfect shot. And then all of a sudden it's on some kid's website. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. whoa, hold it. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. So it'd be great if you understood what copyright law was, how to file, um, maybe a few resources for how you can sell. And then on top of that, some way to to be part of a network where other people are kind of in the same situation trying to learn from each other this is incredible so yeah. now for my affiliate marketers right we talked about yes. the, the people that that do the photography my photography friends cine, cinematography friends cinematography <laughs> that one yeah yeah uh, it's, it's that r it's hard because you're used to the r you know so like when you say dog is perro you're used to rolling your r's so yeah. when you say cinematography, it's it's not a role. It's 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 your your tongue. It's it's very yeah. different. It's very yeah. different. So it's different. So yeah. I'll stick to doing my thing, right? Yes. Um. So when it comes to affiliate marketers, they're creating. You know, like right now, I'm working with this gentleman. His name is um, Jonathan Montoya, who created mm. Freedom Freedom Breakthrough. He's putting content like there's no tomorrow. He's nice. helping thousands of people and this thousands of people are also now creating their own content nice. you know and, and that's just an example of someone that i'm personally working with mm -hmm. but what about all the affiliate marketers that are creating all this content out there and putting you know like i i have and i, I don't i don't have it in front of me but i have multitudes of you know uh different kinds of documents that they have sent me yeah uh, books that they you know ebooks that they have sent yes what do you have for my fellows in affiliate marketing that are creating so much and putting their whole life into it yeah. and not realizing that all their content could be used by somebody else. And, and it is, it is, that's called copy. So um, all the stuff you're talking about is their copy, right? And so they spend a tremendous amount of time. And I don't think people understand this. It takes a lot of time to describe something in a way that it becomes so appetizing that other people want it takes a lot of time and then you're testing you're testing the different advertisements that you provide not only the images but the text like you're testing all this stuff to see what what are people reacting to then you find the the, the you find the description that people really relate to and then you use that you use that content or you create that ebook or you you know you actually have that funnel that describes what your, your services are, whatever it is, and you've done it as well as possible. That's why you've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of followers, right? And somebody else goes, wow, that listing that Sean has, it is, it's hot, it's, it's on season, and um, I'm going to copy it word for word. And so now they just copy, paste. And they start running it themselves. 
every single affiliate marketer should actually be putting the copyright notice on the bottom of every single thing. The pages that they have on their websites or their funnels, um, on the manuals that they hand out, on the eBooks they provide, all that stuff should have the copyright notice in there. Make it very clear the copyright notice is there. Uh, and so what that's gonna do is gonna place the public on notice that this is your content. But separate from that, when you find something that's really hot, that you know, people are just like, man, that, that one ebook, hundreds of thousands of people are grabbing that. That should be copyrighted. You should be following that with the United States Copyright Office at copyright.gov, select you know, uh, publications, and then select the following of it, make a copy of it, submit it to the Copyright Office, fill out the form that's there, get the federal registration. And then if somebody grabs your ebook and they change who actually owns it, they write their name instead of on it, you send them a copy of your federal registration, say, hey, you know, Steve, you need to stop now. This is my federal registration. You copy my stuff. If you don't stop, I'm going to either file a lawsuit against you or, you know, this is like my last attempt to amicably resolve this matter, you know, and whatever the case it may be. But when you do that, you now have teeth. You now have some skin in the game. And the other parties tend to back off a little easier. Now, again, I'm not saying everybody's going to back off. There's a, there's a mess load of knuckleheads out there that you've got to intimidate, right? Um, but that's why you have certain certain platforms where you're doing social media that allow you to enforce intellectual property rights. If you have a federal registration, you can send a copy of that to them and say such and such is copying that I want you to freeze their account or I want you to stop this page. And many times they do. So I'm specifically thinking of, of my, my friend, you know, Jonathan Montoya with his Freedom Breakthrough. He's helping thousands and thousands of people. And that's great how to make money online through affiliate marketing and he has this killer i mean it's 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 i was just talking to another buddy of mine that he's using the same program and he he gives you step by step as to how to how to build your your youtube channel how to how to build your tiktok channel step by step right that's really and good it's and the price that he has is almost like he is the robin hood of affiliate marketing yeah. because it's it's insane that's what so we try let, to do yeah mm -hmm. so let's say that somebody buys his program he they get into his in into all the content that he spent years creating and they're like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna take his stuff mm. and i'm gonna i'm gonna put my my logo my stuff i'm gonna just uh, take that i i already paid him so now i'm gonna take his stuff and i'm gonna create my own thing Right. How would this benefit, how knowing what you are, you know, your expertise, you know, protect him or protects, you know, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of John, Jonathan Montoya is out there in, in terms of affiliate marketing. Sure. How would this impact him in terms of getting together with you, knowing really how much he's at risk of losing? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really good question. And again, this is happening all the time because people aren't, they aren't spending as much time as he is in coming up with original content. They're just copying what other people have. I mean, because they want to do it quickly and they want to make a quick buck. So there's really no respect for originality and authenticity, unfortunately. That's just part of social media. So what he should do is if the content is only accessible, if somebody pays a certain price, then he should make sure that there's a legal agreement when somebody actually does sign up that they actually have to sign off on. So you could actually have like in a funnel, you can have the, the legal language with a checkbox, right? And then you can have the person's name, address and credit card information, but none of that will go through until they check that box, which is a legal disclaimer that says, any material that you receive is not yours. You have no right title and interest to any of this. You're receiving a non-exclusive license to the content just for your own purposes, you have no right to make a copy either online or physically, period. Like you make it very clear, right? And I, honestly, he should work with his own attorney and ask them, say, look, I need a legal disclaimer to put on my funnel. 
And they'll give them that. They'll give them a specific paragraph to put there, have the checkbox there. Now what happens is when somebody goes in there and they want to sign up, they signed a disclaimer. You know, they checked the box as a disclaimer before they made their payment. That means they're locked in on, they understand that this is a non-exclusive license just to look at this content for no other purposes. Now, what he should also do is if it's really important info, make sure that the copyright notice is there. And on top of that, if he's going to allow them to download, because sometimes people put things on Google Docs, right? Make sure, again, what, on where you have the link for the download on Google Docs. If you're doing a Facebook group, you could actually have the disclaimer there where the link is. Do all sorts of things to make the public aware so that when they go to download, they understand that this is copyrighted material. When I run my challenge, I give everybody what I call a security sheet, right? It's not, I don't call it a cheat sheet because I don't like the word cheat. So I call it a security sheet, right? So what I do though, is there's a copyright notice on it. And on top of that, it specifically says, when you try to download this thing, it says, you understand that this is a federally registered uh, copyright. It's federally registered copyrighted material. You have no right to make copies of it, distribute it to any other party, or even save it in multiple different locations. Um, this is all rights reserved, you know, A to E challenges LLC, right? So if I see my, my security sheet out on the web, I'm going to be ticked off. I'm going to be ticked off, right? Now, it, it hasn't happened. Why? Well, number one, I'm an IP attorney and I'm a litigator. I mean, you have to be stupid to take my material and copy it. I mean, that's just, that just makes no sense at all. That, that's like putting your head in the lion's mouth and then like slapping the lion's tongue and going, I dare you to bite me. I mean, you just don't do that, right? Uh, because I don't have to hire a lawyer. I am a lawyer. So, um, so for that reason, I'm fortunate, but most people aren't in that position. So what I would say is get that disclaimer, put it on the funnel. If they're able to download the documents on Google Docs, make, make sure that they have, they under, understand there's a copyright notice right there. As a matter of fact, when I do videos for the challenge, I don't live stream in the Facebook because Facebook gets a non-exclusive license to anything you put on Facebook. Yeah, see, people need to be in this challenge. There's a lot of stuff you guys don't know that I go over in this challenge. I'm not giving you guys any more information. So I'm up for this challenge. Let's <laughs> put it that way. So because these are things that scare people. And these are the things that I go through. But think about it, right? Most, most network marketers, most affiliate marketers, including the ones that are making very, you know, anywhere between say 10 grand a month all the way to a half a million a month sure they're they're live streaming a lot of their stuff through facebook and different places absolutely and, and from you i know from you i know that uh youtube is a little it, it's, a, it's a little better in protecting oh protecting absolutely what we have yeah. so why would you know someone like the jonathan montoyas of the world or someone that already has you know paid for attorneys would they benefit from joining your program and learning what they, you know, it's like, it's like when you go to a doctor and you, you're clueless, you know, because I'm also in health and fitness. So it's like, when I go to my doctor, I know what the heck I'm talking about. I know what yes. I'm asking. Right. So you're kind of like the doctor. I mean, not kind of, you are a, a, a licensed doctor of the law, right? right. By, mm -hmm. by, by your certification, it says that you're a doctor of the law. Why would a Jonathan of the world or someone like Corey Sparkle that they do have their own attorneys or someone yeah. else that has their own attorneys, how can they benefit from going through your program, which is only five hours? And do they have to, you know, all of these people are very busy. Do they have to be plugged into the time that you only give it or can they can they watch? Replay? Yeah, all, all good questions. So they address the second part. You don't have to be available for the lives. You can watch the videos. You can have an assistant. You can have a legal assistant or a paralegal or, or somebody who works for you, watch them for you and keep you up to date. But here's the thing. If you run a company, if you run, run an entity, one of the most important things for us as company owners, as heads of departments, is to be able to issue spot. We need to see things like that. Like we need to look at a scenario and go, 
there's a patent issue there. There's a trademark issue there. There's a copyright issue there. You know, that issue, that, that thing you're talking about right there, we're going to keep that secret on the back end in our central, you know, in our, in our central office. And so for that reason, we're going to keep it as a trade secret. Like you need the issue spot. If you don't know, if you don't know what you don't know, your effectiveness decreases exponentially. If you can issue spot that there is an issue, then you can call your lawyer and say, hey, I'm not sure what the issue is, but I'm pretty sure there's an issue here. I need you. That increases your value. It makes your company way more solid. Um, and as a CEO, as a president of an organization, even as a vice president or even a COO, um, you want to be able to identify issues. You want to look at scenarios and know, you know what? We've got a new funnel that we're running. On the funnel, we're going to actually have an OTO. And on the OTO, there's going to be an ebook that's going to be provided. Do we have a copyright notice on the ebook? That's it. I mean, that thought could should come to your head immediately. Do we have a copyright notice on the ebook? Oh, we don't? Oh, um, is there a disclaimer on there when somebody goes to download it, letting them know that they don't have the right to make copies to this? I mean, literally within one minute, you can position your company to be way more sound in protecting what you spent a lot of time in creating because you're the one who's looking at the landscape. You see what's going on and you're the strategic person or the strategic partner in the entity. So as the strategic partner, I'll give you an example. I have a very large client base, right? And um, like, over, you know, I'm not going to give exact numbers because some people here might know me. So, but it's very high. Let's just say it's high, right? Um, but I don't write every case. I don't have the time to write every case. And I don't litigate every case because I don't have the time to litigate every case. But I know what's happening in every case because I'm the strategist. People put me in a room, I can analyze a corporation within minutes and tell them exactly what they need in many different scenarios and lay out an entire intellectual property program for them. Within hours, they'll be in a solid foundation, right? That's what I do. I'm a strategist and I do global IP portfolio management. So if you're, if you're following in Germany, Korea, you know, China, like I know the laws, like I know how everything works. And so they put me in the room and they say, fix it. That's usually what I get. Somebody says, call Peter, Peter, fix it. And then I say, tell me all your scenarios. Yep. Got that. Got that. Got that. This is what we're going to do. This, 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 this. Okay. Bye. I leave. And then they get a big bill. All right. That's basically what I do. Same thing for a CEO, same thing, same thing, even for a CTO a chief technology officer, somebody who's looking at all the technologies, they need to be able to identify what's protectable, right? But the CEOs and the presidents of organizations need to be able to hear the pitches from their, their VPs or from other individuals within the corporate execs within the company. And when they hear something, they need to go, oh, so we're going to go to that trade show that's taking place in Vegas um, in November. Got it. Yep. Okay. Did we file the patents yet? And the guy's like, well, what do you mean the patents? Well, hold it. You said we're going to a trade show, right? We're going to be offering things for sale, right? Well, yeah, we are. Okay. And you said it was new technology that was going to come out, right? And they say, yeah, we are. Okay. Well, second you offer for something for sale, that moment that you do, it's placed in the public. Once you do that, you lose all potential rights in foreign countries. Be really nice for a CEO to know that. I mean, it'd be really nice for the president of a company to know that when somebody's pitching you and saying, we're going to Las Vegas in November, you know, for a specific trade show that everybody's going to, and we're going to pitch. It's like, oh, great. I'm glad you're going to be pitching, but are my patents filed? Are my provisional patents filed? Like, it's your company. You should have an idea of how to protect your own stuff. If you don't, what you're doing is you're relying upon other individuals to protect your treasure, your gold, your jewels. And um, me personally, I'm not into that. I mean, I don't like to micromanage, but I like to have a good idea of what's going on in my company. 
so that I can, I can strategically say what should happen. If I don't understand these principles, then I'll say, hey, have a great trade show. And then, you know, Mary goes out there and offers something for sale. Two years later, somebody says, let's file a patent. Well, unfortunately, you can't. It's considered donated to the public. We cover that in the we cover that in the program also. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> so okay, so this is and and you know I, I know I know that we're, we're we've been going on for a while. So I'll, I'll close you know I'll close with a few last things. So someone you know someone who who already has an attorney, someone who already you know they they sort of know what they're doing, but they don't have the extent of knowledge that you're providing right Correct. now. That's right. What That's I'm because the attorneys are not. Are there great attorneys? Absolutely. I have many friends who are outstanding lawyers, um, guys that are even better than I am that I know. You know, they've been doing it for 40, 50 years. Phenomenal lawyers, right? But what I don't find them doing often, it's very rare that somebody's taking the time to help them understand the basic concepts that are behind it, the reason why they're making the suggestions for what to do, um, to help them get an understanding. So that in their strategizing, they'll have these things in consideration. You know, when they look at their website and they see, oh, look at all the products we're offering for sale here. Okay. Hey, why is there a trademark of that other company on our website? That's trademark infringement. Well, and so that's what I'm saying. The... So for someone who's watching this, whether they're the Jonathans of the world or the Corey, the Corey Sparkles of the world or whoever it is, right? This, is, this eventually is going to reach thousands of people. So mm. that person can actually not only save thousands of dollars by knowing what, what what, how they can spot something right away and prevent you know, something that they can immediately take it to their attorney. If they know what, they, if, you know, you can or know something you know. That's you right. Know, so, yeah. so like for instance, I, I, you know, I, I, as you might remember, I, I came into the legal field from, from the time that I graduated college all the way to 2010. So there's things that I can just spot right away when it comes to exactly. the legal field. Because I can't all know what I know. Yeah, one of the so, things I always tell people in that area is imagine there's three baskets in front of you and the lid is open on each of the three baskets. And one of them is a cobra. You, you see the cobra in the basket, right? Now somebody puts a lid on each of the baskets and says, okay, forget what you know. There's no way you're going to forget where that cobra is. I guarantee you, you're not putting your hand in that basket because you know. And even if you say, no, I'm going to forget. I do not remember. I don't remember. You're going to remember and you're not going to put your hand in that basket. So you cannot, it's not easy to unlearn what you've already learned. And that's what you want. You know, as a head of a company or even a startup, you know, we're talking about the big wigs, so to speak, right? Even starting your entity, how great would it be to start on a solid foundation so that you're not two, three years down the road and you don't have to start over because you found out that what you're doing infringes somebody else's registration? Well, and I'm thinking, you know, also for people that are that are currently, you know, people that since the pandemic, you know, as you know, 4.5 million people went through the great resignation that they started their own stuff, their own businesses or all this stuff. Right. And now right. 4.5 million people don't really know that you exist. That's right. Right. And they're creating all these things and they're creating all this amazing content or whatever you may want to call it. So once they come through your program, you know, let's say that nobody's using it, but they didn't protect the name of the company. They didn't protect their idea. They didn't protect whatever the case might be. And someone, someone else heard about you. They have the exact same idea, the exact same name because it does happen. Right. And they go through your program and they do it. This other person spent five years creating this whole idea. Yeah. So someone like that, I can imagine if they go through your program, they can not only prevent thousands of dollars spending with their attorneys, you know, like let's say they, 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 they had a solid foundation, they hired the right attorneys, they, they did everything, but they didn't really know what they didn't really know. And right. they, when, when, they, when there was red flags, 
they didn't see the red flags because they didn't know, right? right. But you teach them <laughs> for 95 bucks, you know, and you can tell know, them about yeah. the- <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. And, and like I said, I have lawyer friends of mine that are going, why? Like, why are you doing this? And I mean, I'm, I do well, you know, like I said, I, I head up a, a powerful IP department. Um, it's basically, you know, you get to a point in life when you're like, you need to give back even more. You really mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of like my way of doing that because, I mean, I've always done that. I've always been the one who kind of backed up the, the person that everybody thought wasn't going to succeed. I mean, that one of the litigation cases where I made well over a million on, on the case, um, it started out with a student that graduated from college that had very little money to file a patent application. I cut him a deal just to help him out. He ended up becoming a good client of, of myself for quite some time. Company grew. We ended up suing a large Taiwanese corporation and we won. You know, and so um, again, so people don't realize that how hard it is to set to to sue a Taiwanese. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think yeah. people realize that. That's like that. But one serious. of the things I told him as I, I said, "You've been telling me about this other entity for a long time." He says, "Yeah, I don't I don't like them because they keep banging on my door." I said, "How would it feel if you could force them to fly to the northeast?" in February, he said that would be great to make them fly from Taiwan to the Northeast for, for a hearing in February. He says, I would love that. He said, well, why don't you file a declaratory judgment action against them instead? And we did because they threatened us on something. Next thing you knew, they were in court and they didn't know how they ended up in court. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you guys are going to back off now, aren't you? And so yeah, it's there's certain strategies that are very effective in in the legal system. But what I'm trying to do, honestly, is just get people the basic information. Um, and it, quite frankly, it's not just basic information. Like I'm giving them statutory bars. I'm letting them know, look, if you're working with a software developer and you spend eighty thousand dollars on an app, you do not own the app. Mm -hmm. And people go, well, what are you talking about? I spent eighty thousand dollars. I got a copy of the app. I said, it's not your code. Mm -hmm. Until the software developer assigns all right title and interest over to you, the copyright is in the name of the developer of the software. You need to make sure in the engagement agreement with them that it says that they hereby assign all right title and interest to the software to you. Then they can't use the same code and give it to somebody else and make the same amount of money off of it. That's how your competition ended up with a software app that looks exactly like yours because your software developer sold it to your competitor. And there's nothing you could do about it unless you learn these things. And we cover this for $95. So jump so that's in. Part of the <laughs> this is all in it. I'm telling you. It's <laughs> like we do this. And but what I find, what I'm trying to do is keep it so low that everybody can do this. The multimillionaires, which I've had, I've had the, the millionaires that are in there. I've had guys that are really big, you know, making like 20, 30 million a year. I've got those guys. But then I've got the guys that are making, you know, hundreds of dollars a week, you know, and so everybody can afford this. And if you know what, if your time is so restricted, get your legal assistant, get your secretary, get, you know, get your best friend to sign up for you and get mm -hmm. the information. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't have a feeling I'm going to be keeping it at this price for a long time. But for now, I am. So, well, especially because it's it's something that they can watch you know, after they get done with their, you know, because it's like, for me, what you're saying is that once they know the red flags that they need to be on the lookout for, they're not, they're not going to open the container with the Cobra, right? Because That's they're right. going to protect everything that they've created, you know, now if they need to, if they yeah. need to. And that's one of the things right. I walk them through is determining, do you really need the file? So you have 10 new ideas to file 10 patent applications will probably cost you a hundred thousand dollars, 10 grand a pop. Mm -hmm. It'd be really good if you knew that there was a thing called a provisional where you can spend less money on that, determine which ones are important, file only on those. So maybe you file three utilities, you file maybe two provisionals, and the technologies that you're not using immediately, you sit on, you know, as long as you're not disclosing them, as long as there's no offer for sale and there's no public use. 
So these are the things that are important to understand so you can strategize as a company. Now, as you understand these things, now you can engage a lawyer. Now you can say, hey, I need a lawyer in this situation. So the reason why lawyers are not upset about this is because they realize that an educated individual will want a lawyer engaged mm -hmm. at the right strategic times. It's going to minimize the amount of back and forth. It's going to make their job a lot easier. Um, and at the end of the day, they're going to look like a rock star because they're handling the thing that's important to the client. Mm -hmm. But if you don't even know what to ask them, they're going to spend a lot of time just trying to figure out what's going on if you even spot the issue. So, well, and that's what I'm saying. I think your what your program from from everything that I'm learning and from what I also know from you is that it will it will empower every entrepreneur to be able to spot things right on, you know, yeah. and and decide on on the spot: Do I need to take action on this or do I just let it go? You know, and and then they can move up, up about their business and focus on what the focus is is needed. They in letting the important things on. So, now that that you you've disclosed so much and you've given us so much, how do people find you? Uh, sure. What is the next program? And then, of course, I'm going to put everything. Uh, every I'm going to put all your links and everything. So there's there's a free Facebook group that people can join you so they can stay connected with you. I'm assuming. Yeah. So there's. There's the challenge itself. That's at www.protectyourideachallenge.com. Mm -hmm. So protectyourideachallenge.com. That's where they can sign up. I would sign up soon because people are starting to jump in. Mm -hmm. And the people that sign in early can go live in the Facebook group and let me know what they're looking for. And I can customize early for them. If you sign up late, the chances of my customizing becomes lower and lower. And what I find is like, I even find on the second day that the challenge is running, people are still signing up and there's no chance for me to review their stuff then. I mean, because I'm in the middle of the challenge, I can't exactly review their questions at that point because I'm already in it. And so that's why it's better to sign up early. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I have a lot of wait, 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 wait. You're saying that you'll review some other stuff as well? For VIP, yeah. You will actually review their stuff. All right. So VIP, the way it works is oh that gosh. you get to email me your questions. I Yeah, I know. People are kind of in shock about it, too. So you get to let's say that you're in a situation where you've got a new cookie company, right? And you're thinking, I got to come up with a good name for the company. And I want to open up a franchise. So you go live in the Facebook group and you say, hey, uh, my name is such and such. The reason why I'm here is because we need to come up with a new name for the cookie company or this product line. And um, we want to do a franchise. No, what I do on my side is I know, okay, I need to speak about franchise law. So, and I also need to speak about um, trademarks in general. So people understand how to do a trademark search, right? Now, on top of that, if you're in VIP, you can email me questions directly. Instead of just in the Facebook group going live, you can email me questions. It doesn't mean I'm going to answer all your questions. I'm not answering everybody's questions. Just to be clear, I don't have the time to answer everybody's questions, okay? But what I do is I review them all. So then now that I've reviewed them, I, what I'll do is during the VIP session, which is an hour more after the challenge, the challenge goes from 12 to one. VIP is from 115 to 215, all right? So you can literally get two full hours of legal training, so to speak, for $290 essentially, all right? And so that's each day, okay? So you end up with 10 hours of guidance for $290. Okay. That is also recorded that they can watch at their own time. Yeah, so let me talk about the recordings, all right? You do not have your own rights to the recordings. The recordings are mine, 100% mm -hmm. mine. You get to go through the challenge, watch. I give you access for 30 days. After those 30 days, you have an option to purchase for a higher price if you want, or you can just be done. Mm -hmm. So you can go back and you can watch the videos for 30 days, take notes, write down things, you know, so you understand different things. And then at 30 days, you can be done, you know, all done. What, the, what I'm finding the majority of people are doing is they're saying, I want the videos. 
Yeah, of course. Like they're saying, I want lifetime access. Yeah. So, that, I mean, literally everybody's doing that. I want lifetime access to their videos. So I actually have an option for an upsell to actually own the videos at the end of those 30 days. And of so course. I disclose that all later. Yeah. 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 So, so going back to how do people get a hold of you? Obviously your, your name is Peter Nieves and right. uh, they, right. The so they can either, they can either sign up for the challenge or there's also a social site that we literally just created because somebody I know said, <laughs> you need a social site. And so somebody very <laughs> wonderful said, you need a social site. So there is a social site. Uh, and what I will do, copy. I can actually paste it in the chat over here. I don't know if your chat is made available or not, but that's the address. It's facebook.com slash groups slash social site. Protect your idea challenge. That's where it is. So I will I will put that for those of you who are watching. I will put that on the on the description so you'll be able to grab that as well. Right. And if you go in there, you're not in the challenge. Just to be clear, that's not the challenge. That's just every once in a while I'll go live in there, just give some information. But it's I'm not like teaching anything. It's just right, a matter but, but of, there you they can go in and stay in touch with you so that they can find yes. out if, if for whatever the reason. They, you know, it's already April, right? So That's right. if for whatever the reason these people already booked for April, then they can find out about all of your next. Events. Right. I'll exactly in the social yeah. side, I'll let people know the next one is at such and such time and such okay. and such date. Okay, yeah. perfect. So everybody go to his Facebook group so that you can stay in the knowing you can stay connected. If, if for whatever the reason you're not available for when, when is your next event? April 25th. If you're not available for April 25th of 2022, then definitely, regardless, make sure that you connect with his Facebook group so that you can be in the know. And you never know, maybe right now you don't have anything to protect, but in the future, as you continue to be an entrepreneur, you're always going to need to protect whatever you're creating. So mm -hmm. um, as, as we close this down, is there any last thought or anything that I haven't asked you about that you would like to share? before we close this out? Um, we covered a lot over the last hour and a half. <laughs> so we definitely went through a lot of material. Uh, what I would say is it's really important to be the issue spot when you're running a company. You need to know what you don't know. And this challenge allows individuals to get exposure to stuff that they otherwise would typically not know anything about. And so by doing this, it's a small investment, it's five hours of your life. You know, you can, you can make one or two of the classes if you can't make the other ones and then catch the replays uh, and become more aware, which is just going to make you better at what you do. It's going to make you more valuable, going to help your company. Because at the end of the day, it's rather unfortunate when the majority of people who reach out to me are ones who are in trouble much rather they reach out to me in the beginning, have a solid foundation and not get in trouble because um, it's, it's way more expensive to get you out of trouble than it is to make sure you don't get into trouble. And so I'd much rather be doing that. And for me, this is a blast. I love training people. I love teaching them because they just glow when they get it. Like when I explain certain concepts, they're, it's like, what I'm finding is the challenge is kind of like watching facial Olympics. Like literally they're like, <laughs> like they're making, their faces are making all sorts of expressions. Like if, if you guys watch this video and you watch Maria's face, she's gone from like, <laughs> to like, to like, to like, I mean, and that's what happens during the challenge. Literally people will go like, what? I've been doing that wrong my whole life. Are you serious? And so um, it actually amuses me. And, I tell a lot of jokes during it and I have a great time while I'm going through it. So um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been very rewarding and training people. And yeah, so jump on in and I'll, I'll catch everybody in there. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because this has been very rewarding. I haven't been, you know, in the legal field, but anytime, you know, it's just, it takes me back to my old and, you know, to my, day, my golden days of the legal field. And it's just when, when people know what they need to know to protect themselves, Right. It's, it's 
you cannot know that. So for, for, for those of you who are watching, make sure that regardless whether you're gonna take the program or not, make sure that you connect with the Facebook group because you never know when you're gonna need a powerful attorney like mm. Peter. Mm. That is crucial because you might, you might get in trouble, but you won't remember what you heard about this, about my channel, right? But if you're in his group, you will always be in his group and you will always have contact with him. So whether it is that you need to know what he's teaching right now, or you need to hire him to protect yourself when you become a gazillionaire. So with that, I am Coach Maria Lupita, super happy to have this very special guest. And I'm hoping that I'll have him back again because I'm sure a lot of you are gonna be asking questions. So with that, Again, Coach Maria Lupita, I will see you soon.